Brittany Simon recently made a video commenting on Brooke Schofield's expose video on Brooke's ex-boyfriend Clinton Kane. In this video, Brittany spoke a lot about the dynamics of an unhealthy relationship, calling out bad behavior. At some point in the video she began to talk about a viral issue on TikTok that involved people celebrating and supporting a dangerous person and why that was wrong. There's a second group of people, and this group of people is like, the high, 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 high toxic levels. Like so high, maybe you should be institutionalized, right? And these are the people who like fall in love with murderers in prison. Okay. These are the people that like romanticize incredibly toxic men because they're good looking or because they have a thing they like or that is sexy and they make excuses for their bad behavior, no matter how bad their behavior becomes. Brittany then later goes on to talk about Trisha Paytas' podcast where she praises Trisha for having such an entertaining podcast and seems to commend her for calling out those who do wrong. As to look at the people that we choose and wonder, you know, I was just watching Trisha and Jeff Wittick on Trisha's podcast. Honestly, one of the best podcasts Trisha's done in a really long time. Like, sometimes she just has, like, this really great chemistry with her guests, and it's really, really good. And her and Jeff were really vibing together. I haven't finished it, but it's so good so far. And just listening to Jeff and Trisha tell stories about David and everybody, they knew. They knew it was bad, but they also believed there was a goodness in David. There was a goodness in that group. There was a goodness there, but they know. Even Trish is dropping hints about knowing stuff about people in the group, and I'm like, I believe it. People suck, but people suck because of a lack of morals and values. They don't know what they think is right or wrong. How is it that Brittany can preach that we shouldn't support those that are harmful and toxic, while she herself is supporting one of the most harmful and toxic creators out there? How is it that she could praise Trisha, a domestic abuser, in the same video where she's calling out a toxic relationship? Trisha has physically attacked at least three boyfriends and left bruises on her husband multiple times. Why is it that Brittany can so easily gloss over that fact while holding everyone else's feet to the fire? She talks about how Brooke's ex-boyfriend was never physical with her, yet explains how dangerous it is for society to have toxic people in it and those toxic people being supported. Ironically enough, not realizing that she herself is doing the same thing by supporting a woman who has physically abused multiple partners. What else are you willing to do? Now look, Brooke was never physically abused by her partner, but this was abusive. To lie, manipulate, and coerce somebody into a relationship with you under such false uh, uh, pretenses is so unethical. This is not what we want for society. This is not good for society. This is bad. This is bad. I think this does relate to women fantasizing over really toxic, toxic people. For a reminder, here are just some of those harmful things that Trisha has done to past and present partners. In an episode of Frenemies with Dr. Drew, Trisha complains that Ethan made the fact that she abused Moses public, stating that she's not a person who beats her partner, but Ethan made it seem that way. We had that nobody knew. Ethan brought it up on the podcast that makes me look like I'm a domestic. It's like, I'm a, I'm a person that hits my partner. For reference, this is the incident that she's referring to. And despite crying on the Dr. Drew episode, she's clearly downplaying the abuse here while telling the story to Ethan. Claiming that she barely touched Moses and that he's frail. He's, he said he broke up with you because you started, like, punching him. He's shaking his head no. Oh, okay. Y you said I could say everything. I did not punch him! You said that's why you broke up with me because I punched you? <laughs> I went like this. Okay. Here is the bruise that she left on his body after the incident. That she tried to downplay. She acts as if this was a one-time occurrence and that she's not a partner that beats her partners. However, she's mentioned in another episode of Frenemies that physically another partner is something she used to do there was an incident like early on in my and i talked about this on frenemies but it's just it's a lot it's kind of triggering to bring up that i um i had physically like hit moses in the arm out of a f rage in a fight um really early on in a relationship actually we weren't even dating yet just when we were hanging out or whatever and um, i actually have i've never i've never never have been physically like like that right and now people take that and use that against me and they and i understand that and um 
it's not a pattern of behavior, but it doesn't make an excuse, but it's not this pattern of behavior. It happened once. But like, I've, I've wrestled a roided boyfriend. Technically, he was an abusive boyfriend, but I beat the shit out of him too. He would just punch me and I'd punch him, so. On top of that, Jason's new girlfriend made a post on Reddit about the abuse that Jason endured at the hands of Trisha, which included her physically abusing him, which left him scarred. How can I help balance my mental health with a partner who has severe PTSD? A little less than two years ago I started hooking up with a man while he was in town for a work trip. I live in New York, and he lived in LA, which I happened to travel to around twice monthly for work. He also traveled to New York for work often, and we started to hook up on a semi-regular basis. Note, I am in my mid-twenties, he is in his mid-forties. I never expected anything more than a hookup, let alone to see him again, but we became instant friends. Eventually I began to develop feelings, but found it rather unlikely as he was in the public eye for work a lot, and I had just began my career in NYC. In the beginning of my feelings, it was brought to my attention that the man had suffered BPD and had severe PTSD from his past relationship, which ended in May, we met late June. His past partner used to physically and mentally him, stalk him, attempt to ruin his career, and more to the point where sometimes I would hear him cry himself to sleep. He used to flinch sleeping next to me out of fear of being hit. While in New York, a mutual friend of mine who knew them both prior to me told me a horror story about his ex-girlfriend with graphic details of how she stalked him in a series of audio messages his ex sent my friend while high, confessing to crashing her car into his, calling his job, slandering him online, hitting him, and graphic details of the violent actions that she did to him. There is also tons of footage throughout her vlogs that show her hitting him whenever she was upset by something he said. God, and that was whack, although I really whacked him hard this morning. On the chest. I no. I... What? Ah! <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. Put your hand over some hot tea. What? <laughs> That's a joke! That's a joke! You weren't supposed to get mad at me! You're so skinny. Stupid. <laughs> what do you want to hear? <laughs> Who's Abby? We were Abby? Oh! <laughs> you dumb! Three, wait, three huge ass chocolates! He's never hungry when I'm hungry! You eat all the- Oh, Jason hates that. I went like this yesterday and Jason's like, Don't- Ow! No, you're like, don't hit me. I was- I literally went like that. This whole first yeah. thing now is just to tweet you how I am to you. Like, every day they just say how bad I am for you. I'm gonna start following this person <laughs> and retweeting. <laughs> you do need therapy, she's right about that. It's... Ow! My paintball shot. <laughs> on a run. And you know what? No, you're not. Even Jason, as I love a... going on that run. You can't stop me. Really? Yeah. Yes, I am. Hey, this is the jokes he made that people are gonna be like, oh. <laughs> I didn't even say that, you dumbass! Ow! Ow! You're. <laughs> you lied! You did <laughs> She's amazing to me. I mean, I'm dating one. You know. <laughs> I hate when I hit him. I know what you do. Babe, I would live with you in a studio sit a studio apartment with a fucking tin boy. I hit you for real, so it's like real reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I hit me in the head. Jesus. Wait, let me try to stop you. I slapped you on Jasper's. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Is it better this way? Harder. <laughs> that one hurt. Ethan isn't the reason that people think she physically abused her partners. They think that because she does. And let's not forget that she admitted to driving her car into Jason's house, which Jason himself spoke about. But you're married to Trisha Paytas, who... Well, I wasn't me, married, Dave. <laughs> girlfriend? <laughs> it's the second time you said that. Girlfriend? We were married. Yeah, we, we dated for 12 months. Okay, a year. Yep. She seems certifiable. You know... I've never talked about it. She's she's a complicated girl. Like she's uh 
I, I, you know, I don't like to talk shit about my exes or, or women in general. And I'm not asking. I, I guess yeah, that's not let, what I'm let, asking. Let me try, but I do. I want to explain it to you so you understand. Like, huh, I met her. She was like, she, we got along really great. Um, you know, it was a time in my life where like I, I, I was, you know, like she was really into me. So I love that. She was really sweet to me. She loved me. Like, you know, Trisha, Trisha loved me so much, you know, and, and, uh, and so did her 17 personalities. You know what I mean? So it's just like, uh, it was just, we started filming together and that was cool. And, uh, and we were doing really good. And then it just got to, a a, a place where it was just like, she was, uh, I didn't like, I didn't like the relationship and I, uh, and I couldn't get out, um, because, you know, she threatened to, to ruin me and ruin all my friends. That's, that's really what happened. Um, and then eventually, you know, she, uh, she drove her car into my house and, uh, trapped me in my house for like three hours. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't want to go into it, but, but she's, um, you know, she, at the time I haven't talked to her in two years at the time she was, she was really sick. You know, she had some sort of uh, chemical imbalance where she would kind of black out and anything could happen. Um, she once, one time, one time I was like editing videos and she called me on like a Wednesday. She was like, uh, she's like, Hey babe, what's up? And I was like, uh, I was like, Oh, nothing. And I'm just posting my video, you know, I'm like trying to stay on my schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and she goes, I, I want to go to the mall, you know? And I was like, oh, I can't go to the mall today, you know? No and so I was like trying to be firm about it. You know, yeah. I was like, no, I can't go to the mall. I'll see you tonight. So I was like all proud of myself. Like, you know, I, I put my foot down, you know? Good job, Jason. Yeah. And then she called back like five minutes later and she was like, I've got to myself. You know, she was like driving down right. Laurel Canyon, like swerving, swerving saying around. she's going to yeah. like drive her car off the road. And then long story short, you know, we found her in a ditch with the police and shit like that. And so I, I really did try to like take care of her and I loved her a lot and it just got to be too much. Here's more of what happened when Trisha drove into Jason's house in her own words. The reason Jason blocked me was like the night I was like on meth and stuff. So I kind of didn't want to like involve him so much. So I just didn't. Um, one you didn't see was the reason my boyfriend blocked me uh, a year and a half ago, um, which ultimately was the best for both of us. I got high on meth on my birthday demanded he talk to me and when he said he wasn't gonna see me on my birthday and go to sleep i drove over to his house super high crashed into his house banged on all the doors jumped into his pool naked kicked and screamed through every window of the house he got so scared after three hours he left and i chased him in my car to follow him and got in a car accident and if you think this was an isolated incident it wasn't she also did the same thing to her husband, Moses, before they were married. No, you were like... What? You were, there was one point, I just remember so specifically, where like, I don't want to date you. And I was like, why? But why? And you're like, that's why people date. So they realize that they don't want to date. And you told me you don't want to date me because I wasn't, I didn't have control over myself or something. Well, the beginning, <laughs> the beginning was so crazy that for me, it felt like there was no way for us to move forward like it was just so crazy what was so crazy your behavior <laughs> you're like you can't control yourself and now i see it and i was like could i control myself how showing up to my place like like i had work i have work different projects different things and my whole life is that stability of having that work and then suddenly there's this like element in my life that is uncontrollable and i couldn't have that she has gone after me multiple times with a knife since we've been together. The abuse I go through with T is bad. I wish I could leave now. It is scary. Every day I'm scared for my life. I'm not allowed to talk to my family unless she is there listening to the full conversation and seeing them is just out of the question. I will get back to you when I can. This is the worst relationship I've ever been in. She is so controlling. Everything I say or do is wrong. She's so abusive. She hit me in the eye last week and punched me in the stomach. The bruises on my arms and legs are almost healed now though. If Brittany thinks Clinton Kane is dangerous for lying, why doesn't she think Trisha Paytas is dangerous for physically harming multiple partners? Why is she praising a podcast hosted by an actual abuser? If Brittany wants to speak out on things to keep people safe, 
she might want to focus on speaking out more about one of the most dangerous influencers currently out there. Trisha, there's more important things to talk about when it comes to Trisha rather than the quality of her podcast.